yeah. if you get around enough bad people, you're going to be influenced to, to, to do bad. It's the same the saying they used to say, like, you hang out in the barbershop long enough, you're going to get a haircut. Meaning that, that influence <laughs> of being around there is going to yeah. is going to make you want to be like what you're around. So yeah. you, right. you have to ask yourself, though, the question, too, is who are you trying to influence and why? Why are you trying to influence them? Who gave you that, that authority to even influence them to begin with? Hi, guys. Welcome back to Faith Ignite. I'm so excited for today's episode. Are you excited? I am super, super, super excited. Why are you excited? Because we're going back to our roots. We're going back to our first. And you never forget your first. You never forget your first. Today, we have a Connor McDermott. Yeah, Connor it's such a blessing to be able to have you here to be able to recap everything that's happened for the past mm, two years. Yeah. Two years. And so it's a blessing to have you here, man. Hey, Amen. What an honor to be back on, on the episode with Faith Ignite with you guys. Thank you so much, Rosa. Thank you, Devon. This is an honor and a blessing. Absolutely, man. Hey, real quick, before we get jumped or before we jump into today's episode, we're going to actually do a few things. One, uh, subscribe if this podcast is helping you in any any way, shape, or form. Like and share it with those that you love so we can continue to take this content around the world to the people that need it. And also hit that notification bell so when new content does come out, you will be aware of it and you can be able to digest it and consume it and do whatever you want to do with it. So do those few things just because it helps us tremendously. So today we're going to talk about something that's super, super, super important that goes on in our world, but a lot of people don't realize it. And that is... Drum roll, please. Influence. Yeah, we're going to talk about influence because we realize it's such a big, big part of our world and our culture. And some people understand it, some people don't. And so just kind of thinking about it, what's your perspective on what influence is? So when I, when I think of the word influence, I think what that means, and, and the first thing that comes to my mind is, is who would I say is influential? Because I, I look at that word, the root word of influential, but I would look at Jesus Christ, the yeah. most influential yeah. man that ever walked this this people planet. And yeah. I think about I think about the scripture. There's a scripture in, in Matthew four where Peter walked up to Andrew and Peter and then he walked up to James and John and all Jesus said to these disciples, he said, Follow me. And they left everything at that moment. It said straightway they dropped their nets and they started to follow this man, but they had just met him. That's the type of influence I look at, but I, I see what was in Jesus' life and his ministry. Yeah. It was love. Mm -hmm. That yeah. man had love, but caused people to follow him because they saw something great inside of that man. Dude, when you think about it, like, he just told them to, to leave what they were doing and come follow. They haven't Amen. met this guy for more than five minutes. Amen. And they were going to, like, think about it. Peter had a family. That's he right. was married. That's right. And so he's about to throw away his livelihood because another guy said, hey, just come follow me. Amen. Without any guarantee. That's, when you talk, like you said, that's influence right Amen. there. Right. That's influence in a good way. Amen. But when you think about it, that can also be in reverse. That's right. Where yeah. you have people that are influencing in a bad way. Right. Yeah, like it's, it, can be, it can be messed up. Like, who is it? Who is it? Why, why am I blanking on the guy? Think about, we think about world history. Amen. Hitler. Yes. yes. That dude had a lot of influence. Amen. And influence is something that, it, it's something that's not take back, uh, taken back. It's how you decide to use it. But that's Hitler right. had a lot of influence. But he uses influence in such a bad way where that's right. it almost had a we, we almost had a genocide of Amen. God's people. Amen. And so that's influence in a bad way. But we don't want to be influenced or we don't want to use our influence in a bad way. Amen. So thinking about oh yeah, go ahead. No. No, go ahead. So uh, thinking about it like I counted, uh, I, I even just having this discussion of being on this podcast, we are using our influence in a way where it's going to uplift and benefit people and bring joy and life and hope to them. But also think about it. There's people using influence on a mic just like this. That's doing a recording just like this. That's going to bash somebody or talk down to somebody or or just kind of plant a negative seed. But it just depends on how the person decides to use it. That's all. That, that's all it comes down to at the end. Yeah, it's a platform. So you, we need to be good stewards of sure. that platform. You know, you were just saying that. I think about what do you think made people just drop all their stuff, their jobs, leave their homes to follow Jesus. Why was he such an influential person? What did they? What did he have that they wanted? Because that's all influence is. When we follow someone, it's because we're like, we want to be like them, or we they have something that, that want, captures yeah. our attention. Yeah. Sure. When I think about it, like I, I think about this, when Jesus asked them to come and follow him, do you think they had some kind of foresight, like? oh, this is that guy we heard about. Maybe yeah. this is why we should drop our stuff and leave because we heard about, like, he was doing this and he did this and he did that. Like, they maybe had that preconceived notion. Because think about it. Let's say, for instance, um, let's use J 
Jeff Bezos, for example. Amen. But if I'm before I met him, if I knew like, oh, this guy started a company in his garage, and he's having like a business seminar, and he made billions of dollars, like I already have that foresight. So I'm like, okay, maybe I might I might skip work today because I want to go and be like this guy. Maybe mm-hmm. they had some foresight, but who knows? God, uh, Jesus' love was such such a captivating factor that. Yeah. They just like, you know what? Screw it. Forget it. Amen. We going to follow this guy. Whatever sure. he say, we going after it. We going to go do it. Amen. Well, I think that's so true because when Jesus walked up to him, what he told him was he said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. So he had yeah. a vision. Jesus told him the vision yes. from the very beginning. And I believe all those those four disciples in, in specific, I don't believe they, I believe they saw something first inside of him. It was love, the presence of love because you yeah. can't shake. When you meet someone uh, to me, it's it's like what you were saying that you can you can have two different kinds of influences, and it yeah. comes from a different motivation. You can be motivated by love, or you can be motivated by evil, and whatever one that that you're motivated by is going to be the one that you follow. But there was something inside of those disciples that recognized who he was. Yeah. But he told them from the very beginning, "Look, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to make you fishers of men." But they believed it. So he showed them in the in the beginning the vision of what he was doing. He was coming here to create a kingdom on this earth. Yeah. And you look at different people like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, they've come here to build something, but it was temporary. Jesus yeah. built something that was eternal, but he was using people to do it. And so yeah. I think it's just it's it was the matter of what he told them. It was the vision that he showed. He Jesus had a vision which made him influential because he stuck to it the entire time. Yeah. He says, I've come here now not to do my own will, but to do the will of the Father who sent me. I mean what? That was the vision which made the influence even more impactful he was never questioning what his assignment was he knew very yeah. specifically what it was and he told them up front look i've come to make you fishers of men they dropped their nets immediately and followed him is what the word said so dude mm. thinking about it because there there came a point in time where um when jesus had about 70 disciples amen and they all decided when he, jesus says take of my flesh uh what, what did he say Eat of my flesh, Eat of and, my drink flesh of my and drink of my blood. Yeah. And he was like, wait, this is a hard saying. Right. And they said, they deserted him. Right. And Jesus turned to the 12 and like, do you want to be like them? Amen. Right. And then they responded like, what, what else is there yeah. to do? Like, how would you like, and then even when you think about it in other instances where they were, he told them like, I'm going to die. Amen. But they were going to stick with them. Like what, That's right. what it motivates a person like, you know, you're about to die. You're about, your head is about to get cut off or whatever. Right. But you're like, you know what? Forget it. I'm still doing it. Amen. So what, what 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 causes a person to do that? Amen. Like to commit to that, knowing you you're about to die, and then you still go ahead and do it anyway. Amen. I believe it's love to the vision. It's it was the vi- back to the vision. Jesus came down and and had a direct assignment, and those disciples were completely on board. Once they knew that man and they saw what was inside of him, yeah. that love is so strong that it can connect to the love in someone else, and it'll attach you. It, it's yeah. it's it's the same the same way almost like a, a man clings to his wife or yeah. to, to a woman. It's that love inside of him that would make you attach yourself to someone. And we get that same saying till death do us part. Think mm-hmm. of, when you get married, you you you're 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 becoming one with yep. your partner. But mm-hmm. till death do you part. I mean what that love inside of you would love you love someone enough that you would stay with them until the very moment, even unto death. And yeah. that's what those disciples had for their leader, for, for the Messiah, for Christ. They saw something inside of a man that they were willing to die for because they knew it was love. But you look at in the opposite, you were talking about like Adolf Hitler. Yeah, Think yeah. about what was inside them. It was evil. evil. He yeah. had an evil intention to kill people. But there were people that had that same evil that linked to the evil inside of that man and were willing to die for the sake of that cause. So you look at yeah. it, it's 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 the motivation behind it is exactly. what produces a fruit exactly. from it. So. Thank you so much for your support in Faith Ignite. And I just want to challenge and encourage you just to take your support just a little bit further. In order for us to reach the mission and vision that God has called us to as a ministry, we realize we need help. We realize we need support. And this is why we realize we need you. In order for us to take these messages of faith around the world, it's going to require partnership from people all over. And so we're going to ask if you feel led to go and partner with us, go ahead and follow the link that's linked down below and it'll take you to our website and you can be able to partner with us there. But just know that when you partner with us, you are helping us to take these stories of faith around the world. People, by listening to these stories, people will know that God is real. People will know that God is true. People will know that God is alive and well and he's doing things in the lives of his children. And those stories deserve to be heard. And so thank you so much in advance for helping us take these stories of faith around the world to the people that need them. We love you guys. No, it is. It is. So I, I'm thinking about it. It's like what makes a person fit to be 
mm. influence because in this day and age we have like a lot of influencers instagram yeah, influencers. influencers social media yeah. youtube and so like what what makes someone what 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 makes someone a good fit to be able to follow them like i don't know is this a criteria or like maybe i, I think that this is what i think like if i'm one if i'm an influencer if i'm i have this kind of influence or i look up to somebody and i want to follow them it's because i want what they have and then i want what they have if someone is like tiktok famous they have those followers. What is it that they're doing that I should be doing to be able to have the same amount of followers? And so whatever they do, I'm going to go ahead and follow them. I think it's because of what it is that that person has that, that, that gears me or that, that triggers me to want to go ahead and do what they do and mm-hmm. follow them, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that's a great question because I think it, it depends on you, – you ask yourself the question, like, who are you trying to influence? Yeah. And then you, then you ask the question – who gave you that influence? A lot of people think or would call themselves influence, but who are they really influencing? Because I look at it like that. Like, yeah, I mean, anyone could influence someone in, in a way. Like, you could make a video and say, hey, man, this is really good. You should try this. And a couple people try it based on the word of, of what you said. But yeah. I think really it goes back to the character of that person and the motivation. Because not all influence is good influence. Yeah. Some influence is bad influence. I mean, you think about bad corruption or, 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 or bad company corrupts good behavior. Like, yeah. if you get around enough bad bad people you're gonna be influenced to 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 do bad it's the same the saying they used to say like you hang out in the barbershop long enough you're gonna get a haircut meaning that that influence (laughs) of being around there is gonna is gonna make you want to be like what you're around so you you have to ask yourself though the question too is who are you trying to influence and why why Mm. are you trying to influence who gave you that that authority to even influence them to begin with Yeah, Yeah. yeah i feel like as christians god has given us the authority to be influencers in our own Spec like you. That's why business. it says in the world in the beginning, I have called you to rule, subdue, and dominate. Exactly. That's right. That's what an influence exactly. comes from. So, Amen. however you're acting, and let's say at your job, they're like, "What does Devon have that?" Amen. Like, I love how he his work ethic, how he does this, yeah. how he talks to people. You are influencing influencing them, and then they start doing the same thing. Yeah. It's like many influencers. In yeah, the exactly. Yes. Like I think about that scripture the way we were called to rule, dominate, and subdue. And I think about I, I would sum it up like this. Influence is a part of who we are because God, we yes. were created in the image of That's God. Right. God has influence. He gave it to us in the beginning when he created That's us right. to exactly. dominate, to, to, to um, subdue, to rule. That's right. In order to rule anything, you have to have some kind of influence. Amen. If a king says something, hey, because he has influence as being a king, it's going to get done. That's right. And so we were created in his image. And so influence is a part of who yes. we are. We yeah. have been given that as an in- innate gift. But some people choose to use it for good and some people choose to use it for bad. Right. That's what it boils down to. Amen. Now, how do we, like you were saying, some people use it for good, some use it for bad. How do we become good stewards of that influence that God has given us? Hmm. How to become good stewards of that which God has given I, I look at it like this. When it comes to whether I am being a good steward of what God is giving us, given us or not, I ask myself, is this benefiting somebody? Mm-hmm. Is this what I'm, is this what I'm doing, helping someone get in a better place? Mm-hmm. Not temporarily, but like long term. Because some people like, think about it. You have, let's see, um, people, for example, you have someone that goes and they try to influence you to, to, to smoke weed. Mm-hmm. It may make you feel good temporarily, yes. It may make you feel like you're in a better place, yes. But long term, that's going to destroy you. So therefore, I would categorize that as being something that's being, um, you use an influence in a negative way. Amen. But if you're speaking life into someone, someone is in a bad place, but you're encouraging them, hey, although they didn't um, give you the job this time, keep going. Keep applying to these jobs. Keep looking at these things. You're helping that person long term to be in a better place because they know eventually I'm going to get this job and you're planting seeds in them that is going to make sure that it happens Amen. that's how you know what's uh, and i believe that's how you know your influence is being used in a positive life because it's helping someone long term that's right versus something that's destroying someone Amen. in the end does that make sense yeah absolutely so, you see i think of it as in order for us to be good stewards of our influence we first need to, we first need to be influenced by god Amen. so that mm-hmm. means seeking the word of God, Mm -hmm. whether that is praying in the morning, getting up early, spending time reading your Bible, praying, speaking in tongues. Because then after that, 
then you can go out into the world right. and influence other people. Yeah. Like without you even knowing, just by the way that you're walking in your everyday life, right. you never know who you're going to be influenced. Connor, like you, like you walk into a room, you light it up. Like right. you are funny. You have something powerful in you. And that's how you bring influence into the rooms that you yeah. walk into. Yeah. Amen. Dude, I, I remember I remember this. Um, Miles, when we talked about this, he, he talked about when the children of Egypt, uh, not Egypt, when the children of Israel were in the desert, um, pretty much he was trying to teach them how to rely upon him. Mm -hmm. And he told them that I'm going to be your God, you're going to be my people. But they responded and they were like, no, we want a king like the other That's nations, right. is what they said. Mm -hmm. So those other nations had influence over the, the, the children of Israel. But God was like, no, I have a plan. I will be your God. You will be my people. I will be. I will be pretty much in control of you yeah. guys. But it's like, no, we want someone else. And so obviously they appointed Saul. But I realized this one thing: the le the more internal government you have, That's right. the less external government you need. Amen. And so if you're influenced by God internally, right? Yes. Externally, there's a, there's a lot of things you're not going to do. If 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 you know what's right and wrong, you right. know you won't run the red light Amen. because internally you know that's wrong. Right. And you're supposed to obey the laws of the land. But mm -hmm. if you don't have that internal governance, you're going to go do whatever. Amen. And so I think about it like this. Influence is like every day. So you like, you have like, you have a, like say a group of 20 people. All of them wake up at the same time with no agenda. If one, if you have influence and I have influence, we're both going to go to that group of 20 and we're going to try and gather as many people as we can to come and follow us. Mm. Like that's how it, that's how we woke up every single morning. There's people that wake up without any agenda, but whatever is thrown at them in the media or conversations, they're gonna be swayed by this way or right. that way. Amen. And that's how it is on a daily basis. That's why it's an ongoing war because you're trying to, you like social media and culture trying to influence us to do one thing, but then the word of God is influencing us to do another thing. That's so right. we always have this tension between both sides. Amen. And so it's just this ongoing thing where, you know what, you have to pick a side. Mm -hmm. I'm either going to do it this way, I'm going to be influenced this way, or I'm going to be influenced this way. Absolutely. I'm going to use my influence in either one mm -hmm. or two ways. Amen. So think, like, I, and this is thrown across the board, but, like, think of a time where you use your influence in a bad way. Think about a time where you, you misrepresented your influence. I know we got a long list, but just pick one. Just think about one. Hmm. Hmm. Use your influence in a bad way. Yeah, you use your influence in a bad way. Dude, I, okay, I'll go first. <laughs> I'll go first. I remember when I was in, in elementary school, I had this um, I had this girl, she had asked me, um, this is right after like our morning devotions as, as a school, and she had asked me, she's like, are you a Christian? And at this point, I mean, I was young. I told her, I was like, nah, I kid you not, I said this verbatim. I was like, nah, I'm a half Christian. She's like, oh, okay. I, could, I didn't even know what that was, but I told her I was a half Christian what? because I wanted to be like <clears throat> cool. a part of, I want to be cool, but yeah. I also wanted to be like, no, I wanted to be known I'm a Christian. So I was like, I'm a half Christian. And what? she's like, oh, okay. Like, I, and obviously because I told her I was a half Christian, she thought certain things were okay. What? But I was like, no, mm -mm. I was using my influence in and a then, bad way. I was right. influencing to let her know, hey, what you think Christians don't do is okay with me because I'm a half Christian. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, di I'll dabble a little bit in what you think, but... Because I'm a half Christian, I can do that. Yeah, I was yeah. misusing, I was misrepresenting my influence, if that makes sense. Then, yeah. Okay, I have one, but this yeah. was like, I was really young, middle school, so I was a part of this group, um, and we were basically like the Mean Girls, and oh, I don't know okay. if you've ever watched the movie Mean Girls, but they had like a burn book. Oh uh, yeah, I no, can't no. believe I can't, I'm remembering this, but a burn book was basically this book about like people, like you were just bashing people, and we made a burn book. That was like the worst thing I've ever done, and like how I used my influence because that's like people knew us. It was like the popular group or whatever yeah. at the time in middle school. Um, but yeah, I definitely regret that. That was yeah. not a good way to use my influence. I should have stopped that right away. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, yeah, in Jesus' name, we're not doing this. Yeah. So, yeah. What about you? I, I was thinking of one. It's not really, this one's not bad, though. I mean, this one. This one's more like, I think it was a, an entertaining night. This was in <laughs> Oklahoma City, not a, it was probably like three years ago, uh, and I was at an Andy's Frozen Custard in Edmond, yeah. and uh, there was like probably four high school kids in there. And I remember I just walked up to them, and I, I started talking to them, and I found out that one of them played the guitar. Okay. And, uh, and I told him, I was like, man, do you have your guitar with you right now? 
he had a guitar and an amp in his car. And so we're inside the Andes. I said, dude, I said, the coolest thing, I said, we can make history tonight. Let's hook up the amp inside the Andes and have a concert. They're like, no, man, we don't. I said, I'm telling you, if you do this, it'll be a night you will never forget. And long story short, we got him to bring the amp in, the guitar. They had a concert inside the Andes, and all the employees were on board with it. And I remember I remember how much joy it brought to these. They were all in high school. They're, they're in college now. But okay. I remember seeing them probably years later, and they were like, do you remember that time wow. we played the guitar in, in the Andes? Yeah. And I just thought, like, how cool was that? Because it was a moment that they remembered. Yeah. But I remember in a, in a way that there was not there was something inside of me that influenced them to bring it in because they weren't going to do it. Yeah. But I wanted it more for my sake because I thought, now this is cool, and I don't know how to play yeah. the guitar. So I, I couldn't – I could help set it up, but I had no other, other portion in it other than yeah. that. So, But I remember that moment, though. Yeah, wow. Dude, influence is such a powerful thing. Influence is really, like, the make or break point for any, any believer because – at the end, you're either going to be influential or you're going to be influenced. That's right. Yeah. That's just how it is. One side or the other. You're going to be influential and you're going to lead people in the way that you're following. Amen. Or you are going to be influenced by someone else to do whatever it is that they're doing. That's right. I don't, I, I, I don't remember who said this, but they were like, as a leader, if you go and take a walk and you look and you look behind yeah. you and nobody's behind you. Amen. No, I, I'm, mis, I'm, I'm mis saying it wrong. If you're a leader and... You realize you've gone so far and you look back I mean, and nobody's behind you. You're just taking a walk. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was straight up Mr. Shell. Oh, that was One Mr. Shell. Shell. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I couldn't remember who, told, who I heard it from. I mean, but we have been taught by Mr. Shell, like, leadership is being able to serve. That's like, right. when I see Mr. Shell do something, he is serving me in a way and I mean, it then influences me to be like, Oh, that's right. how you do it. That's right. And because of it, because of what I've seen, his influence, I want to go now and replicate that to the level I'm able to do right. so. Amen. It's just like, like he he shows it in such a way where it's possible for anyone to do it at the level that they're at. That's right. But he does it by serving you, Amen. not by commanding or dictating. But he does it by serving. Amen. And I think that that has a lot to do with, with influence is submission and authority. I mean, when you're mm. submitted yeah. even under a man or under a woman, the same way Christ was submitted under the Father, there's an authority that comes to you because you're serving or you're submitting. But within that authority is the realm of influence. Your influence is greater because you've submitted to some. Mm -hmm. You have the authority of the one you're submitted to, yeah. which means you have really their influence. It's the same way like if you said your your dad, Devon, is the president. Just say he's the president of America. Yeah. Well, you go anywhere in America, you yeah. have now the influence of your father. That's Why? Right. Because you're a part of him. You're yeah. his son, but yeah. you're submitted underneath him. It's the same way in the kingdom of God. Yes. Your word, it's, a, it's, it's really with the word. I, yeah. I kept thinking about the words the whole time you guys were talking because yeah. I, I remember that the scripture the power of life and death is in the tongue meaning mm -hmm. everyone has influence no matter yeah. who you are whether it's good or bad everyone has the power to influence someone because they have the power of their words and that's where life wow. or death is in mm -hmm. so it, it's it's really the representation of whenever rosa was talking about how do you steward something you guard it it's even in what you say think about it. you can't just say anything to her and she can't just say anything to you because you guys are married that's because right. it's it's going to influence you like yes. you come home and you said hey well, why aren't the dishes done you know what i mean or you have to guard that which is entrusted to you. Why? Because the power of life and death is in the tongue. Meaning yeah. every time you speak, you're influencing someone to, to believe something or to go against something. Yeah. Yeah. And so I see that the more and more, it's really the the fact that we have words means we have power, which means we have influence. But yeah. it was given to us. He said, I've Man. given you the power yeah. of yes. life and death. But he also, I gave you the power to trample over serpents and, yes. and to heal the sick and to cast out demons and, and to raise the dead. Yeah. He gave us that, that power <laughs> exactly. and that influence. But it came through words. Yeah. If you say nothing, Nothing, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. The moment you speak, you're influencing whatever you're speaking to, like the mountain or the, the whoever says to this mountain. Mm -hmm. You have influence over over natural material things. You can no. speak to a mountain because you can of speak the influence money. you have. You can speak to money. money. <laughs> you can call money. You can yeah. speak to your business. Exactly. You can speak to your marriage. You can speak to yeah. your finance. You can speak to things because you have influence over them. Because, yeah. like you said in the very beginning, we gave we were given power and authority to subdue this earth and to yeah. rule it. But we lost that through the influence of other mm -hmm. things, yeah. material things social things right all really from satan though yeah that was all, it all satan. started with him it yeah. did it all it started did. with him dude i think when you talk about that i think about when it talks about when we pray when jesus said when you pray do not use your own name that's right mm -hmm. bro he said don't use that's your name right. because you ain't got no power no, no we power. Got no power use <laughs> the name <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so you ain't got nothing. Dude, he says, do not use your name, but use my name. Yeah, Anything man. you ask the Father in my mm. name. Yes. Because exactly. that name, under that name, you've been made righteous. That's you've right. You've been cleansed. You've been You have redeemed. his authority. And, I th- bro, I think about it. When you use that name, you come in a different, you come in That's a different right. level, oh, bro. Yeah. You're coming in sonship now. Bro. You're not coming in as just even like a child. You're coming in as a son or a yeah. daughter. You're coming in in, in full covenant right when you exactly. use that name. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the name that bought us back. Exactly. Yes. Man. What? That's good. No, oh, I'm no, just dude. like I'm th- glory day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Think, bro. I'm thinking about what you talked about. Like influence comes with authority and submission. That's right, bro. Yes. If people want influence, right. But this generation has a hard, exactly. very, yes. very hard time when it comes to Submitting. submission, right? To um, to authority, Amen. like it's like, oh no, it's my way or the highway. That's right, bro. It's like they 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 we we miss it somewhere. There's a disconnect somewhere when it comes to influence and submission and authority. Like, or they just want it for a little while, and then once they've reached that level of success, right. they drop down. That's yeah. right, because they want it quick. That's a good point. Because think about the people that did influence people, but where are they now? Right. You think about people that were maybe very influential, like even like movie stars or actors. They may have been influential for for seasons but yeah. where are they now it was temporary what yeah. the motivation behind it because yes. you asked the question again who gave them that influence who mm. gave them the right to say they they were influence in, yeah. influenceable or whatever yeah. the word <laughs> who gave them that authority yeah. unless that authority came from god it's temporary but yeah. the authority we have the influence we have it's eternal it'll yeah. be it'll be with us until the moment that we we go back up with him in glory yeah. because it was the authority he he left us that authority he gave us that influence until he came back and got us again and yeah. so it it won't it's not like short lived it's long lasting because mm-hmm. it's of god it's of his kingdom wow man that is good that's good that's some good teaching mm-hmm. right there man this, hey yeah. we throw we throw no facts here like if you don't want to make like if you want to avoid 10 years of confusion and mishaps Listen to this. This is wisdom right here. Wisdom is knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. That's right. Yeah. Having influence should be something that everybody, it shouldn't be something, it's something that you have. You just have influence. Amen. How you use it now is totally up to you. That's right. That's what the, that's what the bottom line is. That's how right. you use it. That is that very is totally true. You to always you. have influence over someone. That's like, right. Like we're married, when we have kids, like it's just like a ripple effect. Our parents, whoever it is, Someone is always going to have influence. Well, is true. it safe to say this, that your life is a summation of who influenced you? Yeah. Your life is You're using big words, though, bro. You got to break that one down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it safe to say that you're the, the, the end or the sum total uh-huh. of your life okay. is based on who you were around, what they said to you, what they did, what they showed you. Yes. And yes. everything else in between. Yes. yes. Okay. Because I'm thinking about like people, everybody is not birth, everybody's not born in like a great situation where right. they have a silver spoon in right. their mouth. Then, Some people born in, in such hard times, but right. their life, the end of their life is decided by who they were around, who right. they spend their time with. Like the Bible talks about you become what you keep seeing. That's right. That's if right. you are around folks that just... Got no plan in life, just want to sit on the block, get high, like do all kind of destructive things. Your life is going to be a sum total of all of that. Your That's life right. is going to spell destruction at the end. Amen. But if you're around people that are building businesses and gearing towards success and chasing after and following God, your life is going to be exactly those things. That's right. It's just a matter of fact. You, it's just a matter of a fact. It's just something that happens Amen. because you are what you, you are, what you allow yourself to become. That's who right. you're around. Like the saying goes, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Amen. Mm-hmm. That could be more, for this, that, that could be right. more um, truthful there. Amen. Right. That's such a blessing because it's 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 true because even when you're saying that, we're so blessed that we get to sit under a man or have a man in our life yep. as a mentor, Mr. Yep. Shell, who has influenced us to the point where, I mean, a lot of the things that I'm operating or walking in, I didn't know were possible had I not seen or met a man that I saw it present in his life. Yeah. There was fruit in his life that influenced me that, that almost made me go like this. Father, if it's real with him, it can be real with me. Yeah. But the only way to get to where he was was to serve that which he was submitted to, which was Christ. Yeah. And so I saw the influence he had, not just in my life, but everyone he encounters life, but the root of all of that going back to love. There was love inside this man that would cause men to even follow him or yeah. to sit under him and to, to hear hear the words of, of wisdom that he had to speak. But at the same time, I think about even the way we dress. 
yep. and what we drive, what we like, what we like to wear, where we like to go eat. Mm-hmm. And all of these things are influenced because of a man that showed us like, look, these things are possible, but there's only way one way to get them, and that's through serving Christ. Yeah. But it's a blessing to have that because you think about it, a lot of people don't have a personal they don't have a personal encounter with someone like that. So we look at the world and they look at celebrities and they look at their TikToks and they look at the Kardashians and they're influenced by all these people, but they don't know them. We know this man. But the thing is not just knowing the man, you have to know the Lord. You have to know God. When you know him, you have the influence of him now in your life because you know how God operates. The same thing with the prodigal son, remember? When the prodigal son came back home, he had the influence. The father gave him everything that he had from the beginning. He gave him the robe. He put a ring on his mm-hmm. finger. He clothed him. He put shoes on his feet. Exactly. He gave him everything that the father had because he had that influence on the son. The son came back to the father because he remembered the way the, the mm-hmm. hired servants ate exactly. at his father's house. That was the, the influence. The father had influence over the son. But it's the same thing now. We have to have influence from the father that we're able to influence people as well exactly. with that same position of authority. So, Exactly. Dude, um, dang, I had a thought. Brain fart. I was about to come back to you. I had a thought. I had. I had a thought. Um, I was talking about influence. I was talking about influence. Ah, what was it? It was really good. I promise you, it was really good. I was about to come back. <laughs> yes, it was. We about to get that thing come. back. It was really good, man. Um, Let's go. Man, what was it? I am having a brain fart right now. It was about. Was about it was about in, it was about influence that was you just question? talked about. Was it clothes, son? We were talking about the places the we eat, son. the prodigal son. Then we talked about what we like to eat, wear, dress, drink, no, listen man, to. I, I I know I'm gonna get the question back. But, oh yeah, it'll come oh, back. I, I'm gonna get it back, but um, dude, I can't st- like I can't stop thinking about the importance of of influence. Like mm. when when we when we pass away when we die, we're gonna be asked. What did you do? Like, did you do what I sent you to do? Yeah. Amen. And when you have your the the reel of your life played back, you're gonna see, hey, I influenced this person the wrong way. That's right. I instead of taking them down the path of righteousness and the part of path of light, I told them something that they ended up planting a seed in them that set them back 15 years. Amen. Mm-hmm. I I introduced someone to to drugs, and now instead of becoming the the next president of the United States, right. This dude is on um, Skelly Drive Amen. in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Amen. with a sign up saying "Anything helps." Right. That was that. That's going to be like some people, and and the sad reality is that's going to be some people's highlight reel when they when they pass that's away. Right. But we we want to make the decision that our highlight reel is going to be finding someone that doesn't know what life is in, or what life should be like for them, Amen. and be like, "Hey, follow me as I follow Christ," like that's Paul right. said. Yeah. That's right. Follow me as I follow Christ. And then what are you, what are you talking about? Like, just follow, you see what I have? You see what I do? You see what I'm about? Follow me, and I will show you how to get these things. I will show you what to do. I will show you why my life is the way that it is. Amen. And in doing so, you can show them Christ. That's right. You can show them Christ. Like Mr. Shaw always talks about, money is something that the world is after right now. If you have money, the world will listen to you That's because right. this this one this I wish I had some do, I wish I had some dollar bills. This one piece some of paper, bills. the one piece of paper like this long, yeah, influences someone to either stay up late at night. That's right. Wake up early in the morning, not go home and neglect their family. That's right. This one piece of paper that this long, this wide, Amen. does that. Amen. A piece of paper does that. Amen. But Mr. Shell says, when you have that that little piece of paper, mm-hmm. the more of it you have the more attention you get from others. That's right. And by having positive influence now with a lot of this, yeah. you can be able to point a lot of people that's right. in the right direction. Well, that's so true. It, because it, it, it's what Mr. Shaw always says, but I've, I've heard Rod Parsley say this. I've heard Ted Shuttlesworth say this. All, all these great men of God said, you can't do ministry without money. And yeah. people and people look at it like, well, you know, uh, you should be giving to the poor and, and you should be doing this or that. But think about, I mean, this podcast costs money. It, the, it does. The, the it does. Room, it costs money. The conference room to, to be in here costs money. The lights that are on, the electricity, to right. do, these microphones, the cameras, the computer, all of that costs money. So, yep. but, the, but the thing is, the gospel is free. That's true. Yeah. The gospel is a free gift of God to 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 everyone. Right. But the ministry, the working of the ministry, the working of the gospel, that yeah. costs money. So you have to have. It. And I think a lot of times people can even misuse that with the influence they have yeah. with money. I think about the the rich young ruler. 
mm -hmm. came to Jesus, and he was excited, the Bible said. He was so excited to see Jesus because he had kept all the, the laws yeah. since, yeah. since a child. Right. And he came up to him, and he was like, Jesus, like I've done this and that. What else must I do? And Jesus said, he told him, he said, liquidate your assets and follow me. He said, go sell everything you have and follow me. Yeah. And it said that that boy, that, that rich young ruler, turned away with his head down in mm -hmm. despair. Why? Because it said he had great wealth. But really, mm -hmm. it wasn't that he had the great wealth. That great wealth had him. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? Yeah. He had money. He had the power of money and the influence of money, but it owned him. Right. The money influenced him. He wasn't influencing the money. So and what does that look like practically if the money is influencing somebody and you're not influencing the money? Then that means that you have no foundation of uh, really, I, I believe, of, of biblical truth because all all money, I, I believe this. This is my personal belief yeah. that God, and this is scripture actually, God delights in the prospering of his servants. I mean what? Yeah. God gets excited to bless us. He yeah. does. That's what yeah. the word said. Exactly. So we're supposed to have the money, but at the same time, it's always a position of the heart. The reason sometimes people can't have money is the motive of their heart. Exactly. God is not going to bless an evil man. Do evil men get blessed? Yeah, but it's not coming from God. Exactly. But Satan's blessing them. Yeah. But and, there, and it says that there's a wage for that. The wages of yeah. sin is death. No, they're getting paid. They're getting paid. And they're getting paid. <laughs> they may be getting paid financially, but the ultimate the ultimate wage for what they're doing is death. It's yeah. it's complete separation eternally from Christ. So it's it's the way you look at what money really is. It can be a resource yeah. or it can be something that people are using to influence other people in a negative spin. But at yeah. the same time, the fact that the fact is that God wants the church and his people blessed. He wants yeah. them to have money, but it's the accepting of that. It's mm -hmm. knowing that, okay, it's not that we have money and we get all these nice things. There's a reason for it. There's right. a ministry yep. work to be there done is. on this on this earth until he comes. It says until the whole world has, has, has heard the gospel. Yeah. But how do you get the whole world to hear without money? You need money. You need yeah, money, man. You need dinero. You need dinero. I want to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, it's just, it, it's a blessing because... Because you realize, like, influence does all of this. That's right. Yeah. Like, like, like you talked about influence. Um, influence, like you said, the, the money had the young ruler, but the young ruler did not have the money. That's right. And that looks like practically, like, hey, if this money has me, if this money, if this, let's say, for instance, in, in a modern day sense, I have a business deal right. that needs to close and is geared to bring in five hundred million dollars. Yeah. I might, for, like I said, I may forsake being with my family because right. Right. I need to stay up mm. all hours of the night for five weeks to That's make right. sure this deal is closed. The money may have me. That's right. Yeah. If I'm doing all these things just to get more money in my bank account, right. the money has me. That's yeah. right. I don't have the money. When you That's have right. the money, it looks like practically like this. You have this money in your bank account and be like, you know what? I don't have to work today. Or... I want to use this and I want to go ahead and bless somebody. I want to use per this and I want to buy that. I mean, Amen. perfect example, Job. Right. Everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything taken away. Yeah. Not only, I mean, wealth. Right. But family. family. That's yeah. right. Like servants. He yeah. lost, he lost, he lost everything. <laughs> everything. He lost <laughs> everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything taken away, but, but he you see, didn't never have that. Curse God. Exactly. Never. But you see the difference between the rich young ruler? Because he walked away up. He walked away sad. It was a position of his yeah. heart. The yeah. one thing God was, Jesus was prophesying to him. He spoke to the one thing in his heart that he knew was in there. Yeah. Think about it. He didn't say, go give to the poor. He didn't, he didn't, all he told him was, go sell your possessions and follow me. He yeah. couldn't do it. He, the thought of that made that man upset right. and depressed. He walked away with his head down after greeting Jesus with a smile. Mm. He spoke to the one thing in his heart yes. that he could not do. So you ask yourself the question, because you look at Job. Job never cursed God. After all these things happened, yet he never cursed God. He wasn't he attached never to the money. It. He wasn't attached to it. But you see what happened with Job in the latter years of his life? Yep. It yeah. was more blessed. He got double for his trouble. Yep. He was more blessed in the latter years than he was in the former. Why? He never cursed God. It wasn't. It's always a position of the heart. Yep. It is. Yeah. And no one knows that position other than God. So yep. God knows God knows what's inside the heart of man. Yeah. He does. And he, he he's not going to bless someone that, that's motives are wrong. Not exactly. from the provision of heaven. Exactly. Now, people are blessed. There's, I mean, I wouldn't even call it blessed. It's really a curse. They look blessed. Like even a lot of these millionaires and billionaires, yeah, they, they, you consider their life, and it looks like they have things, but those things have them. Because take those things away from them, and what do they have? What do they have love? People have suicidal exactly. thoughts. Like, I just lost everything. Right. Exactly. Man, the power of influence, ladies and gentlemen, like it's such a big, big deal, and it, it, it right. crosses over in so many aspects of our lives that we don't even realize but one of the things like we like we emphasize, 
does whatever you have influence you or are you influencing it? That's the question that you need to ask yourself. Whether it's money, whether it's time, whether there's a relationship, does that thing have you or do you have that thing? Are Amen. you influencing that or is that influencing you? Amen. And by e being able to answer that question, you can be able to have an honest conversation with yourself and be like, hey, no, this is not healthy. This is not good. I am not utilizing my influence the way I should be because of how I was created. I was created to dominate, rule, and subdue, Amen. not to be dominated, not to be ruled, not to be subdued, because it's innate in us. Everybody has influence. Bottom line is, are you using it in the way you're supposed to? So That's good. with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to wrap up this yes. episode, but I want you to think about influence. Think about how you're using it and think about what you could be doing Amen. in the meantime to build yourself up, build others up instead of tearing them down. And so we're going to have to wrap this one up. Um, like I said in the beginning, those three things, like, share, subscribe. Do us those favors because when you do that, you can take this message of influence around the world. Use your influence in a good way. <laughs> take it and share this all around the world to the people that need it. And so with that being said, my name is Devon Williamson. My name is Rosa Williamson. And I'm Connor McDermott. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Faith Tonight. We'll see you guys next time.